Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, December 21st, four days before Christmas, around 8 p.m. Mountain Time 2021. We have an M flare, Earth directed, headed our way. But the big story snow ho ho. And let's get to it. Incredible totals. Up to eight feet of snow is expected in the Sierra, and that is just this week through the holiday. Keep calm. It's boom time. Eight feet of snow expected in the Sierras, and travel over the Sierra Nevada is highly discouraged. Well, after today, Weather Service says, because they are going to be bu -bu -bu buried. Let's take a look at what it will look like in just a few days. There you go. There's your sedan. And with heavy snow, that means rain, which is insane in San Francisco Bay Area, forecast for eight days straight. So flash flooding and road closures, etc. The West Coast, Colorado weather, the storm will bring several feet of snow to ski resorts just in time for Christmas here as well. In our region, we're looking for up to eight feet of snow updated winter forecast reveals interesting weather scenario for michigan what say you above normal snow and that's a ho 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 let's check out the weather active weather across the southeast periods of heavy rain and snow for the west a storm system will track across florida today with the chance for severe weather and periods of rain there were th tornado watches and warnings up in this uh northern regions of the state a storm will track off the eastern seaboard Wednesday with increasing winds and wintry weather in New England. For the west, a series of Pacific storms will bring periods of heavy, low elevation rain and mountain snow through the holiday weekend. Dry weather remains for the western high plains. Now, this will all shift rapidly. And let's get to the models. Here is your Wednesday, and you can see that snow moving into the northern Sierras. Snow will be moving into Washington State. Snow will be falling in northern Michigan northern Wisconsin, and be moving into the northeast by Thursday morning. Here's your Thursday forecast. Heavy snow will be running all the way down the Sierras in northern California, snow into Oregon, Washington State, moving into Idaho, heavy snow in northern Idaho, western Montana, and western Wyoming as that storm drops down the Rocky Mountain front through Friday. And by Friday, we're going to be sitting on about uh, 8 to 10 inches of snow in the mountains here in our region. Take a look at Nevada. Northern Nevada is going to get pummeled. There will be up to four feet of snow already on the Sierra Crest by Friday morning. And that snow is going to continue through a series of events, which could bring a heavy dump to Iowa sometime in the new year. I'm sure they're happy to hear about that. That is actually New Year's dump in Iowa showing up on the GFS right there. And some snow in western Colorado. That has been very little precipitation in certain regions we call them dry holes, but for our area, we are looking at four feet of snow where we're sitting. Some areas of the Sierras, I saw numbers in here, 151 inches. Let's run it through and see what, okay, we're not getting any good numbers on here. If I put the west up, 102 inches up here, nine feet up in Oregon. Hello. And I saw 14 feet here right near Tahoe. So that's what we have to look forward to moving into the new year. Heavy snow, and that's a ho, ho, ho. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We had some activity on the Tyrannus Fracture Zone here off of the coast of Cali, right near that Cascadia megathrust. Luckily, it was not on the megathrust. So good news there. And I'm sure lots of channels got lots of views on that one. But no other quakes of note uh, to talk about. But we do have some interesting discussions about some volcanoes. Just a moment. Now, we've been monitoring the Honga, Tonga eruption since its inception about 48 hours ago. An Air New Zealand funeral flight to Tonga was canceled today as Honga eruption continues. Confirmed um, by multiple sources, including Himawari. And let's come over and check out the most recent update here. Honga Tonga 
Continuous eruption with plume extending to 40,000 feet. So it's been erupting for two days to 40,000 feet. This is now VEI 3, 4 territory and continues to erupt. Could be VEI 5 by the end. But it's in a very remote region and not a lot of people taking a look at this. So we're keeping a close eye on Honga Tonga as it continues its record eruption in Tonga. And there we do have another interesting update I want to point out. Manam volcano, volcanic ash possible to 35,000 feet. This just coming out about an hour ago. So we're going to wait for a confirmation in the morning and look at some Himawari after we make the video, especially for Honga Tonga Tonga, because we're going to be making a video on the Honga Tonga Tonga boom and its continuous ash bloom from the Himawari footage so we can show you what's happening from space. Fantastic. Now let's talk about space weather. Moving right along. What a segue. M1 solar flare. Happening about 48 hours ago, solar activity increased to moderate levels with an M1.8 solar flare around AR2908 near center disk at 1136 UTC on December 20th. A faint, slow-moving coronal mass ejection was produced and appears to be headed mostly to the southeast here and away from our planet. Um, but we do have the WSA annual solar wind predictive spiral here, and you can see that there is definite an impact late on the day on the 23rd, followed by a stereo, a secondary impact on the 24th, but a double sh shock front here on Earth coming late day 23rd for a boom. And then if you're checking out stereo A, maybe a boom later the next day for all you nerds out there. Now, evidence from galactic cosmic rays that the sun has likely entered a secular minimum in solar activity. That means a grand solar in minimum, folks. <laughs> yes, a secular minimum like the centennial minimum or the Dalton minimum or the modern any minimum is a grand solar minimum. Now, this article has been accepted for publication and undergone gone full peer review. And since the beginning of the space age, the sun has been in multi-cycle periods of elevated activity, which we call secular maximum. And the secular maximum is the longest in the last 9,300 years. We called it the grand maximum. Since the end of solar cycle 21, however, the sun has seen a decline overall. We've been dropping down into the next grand minima, the modern eddy minima. And this method confirms it. So, and galactic cosmic rays are the tip of the iceberg and the icing on the cake. Now, the modern grand solar minimum is well known. It's argued about what the name is and the magnitude of the sun's solar activity has been decreasing for several solar cycles since the uh, grand maximum. This period of decreased solar activity is now known as the modern grand solar minimum and will last from about 2020 to 2053 according to the work of several scientists including Zarkova, Diamond et al., United States National Oceanographic and Administration, NOAA, even uh, admits to this. So, there's your data, and we'll show you more of that data right here. So here's the Maunder Minimum, a, a long grand minimum that lasted for hundreds of years. And sunspots came back again. Then we dropped back down here into the Dalton Minimum during the 1800s where it got very cold. And then it warmed back up again. And then we dropped back down into the Centennial Minimum here during the 1900s. And it warmed back up here to the Grand Maximum. And since then, well, kids... We're dropping back down. And cycle 24 is the same as the lowest cycle back in the centennial minimum and the second lowest cycle back in the Ma uh, Dalton minimum. So we've already had a cycle that's as low as the last two secular minimums. And so it's very clear that the last minima or grand minima started here on cycle 24. And now cycle 25 will just be the second cycle in the grand solar minimum uh, pattern, which lasts for four to seven solar cycles or longer. So this is just the first solar cycle of the grand minima. The second one will be 25. The next one will be cycle 26 and 27. All will be the modern minima or the eddy minimum, the eddy grand minima, whatever they name it. And that's what you're living. And that means increased aurora, which will be accentuated, by the way, by the magnetic excursion that we're all living. Earth's magnetic north pole continues drifting and cross the pr prime meridian. It's headed 
towards Siberia at a very rapid rate, about 45 kilometers per year. Some people are claiming that it's traveling much faster than that, but anyone can say anything, and I digress. <laughs> now let's talk about some more facts. 41,000 years ago, auroras blazed near the equator. In a similar event, which has just begun and will be peaking in a decade or so during the peak or the bottom of the grand minima, the same time the Earth's magnetic field will be dropping towards zero. And that means increased cosmic rays, mass extinction, and instantaneous speciation all at the same time. And, well, I'm sure more petroglyphs that we're going to be hacking onto cliffs. Now, the date of the apocalypse, according to the uh, Sir Isaac Newton, was encoded in the pyramids of Egypt. Thank God I got to take a trip out there. But more importantly, an indestructible black box will record our planet's demise in minute detail, just what we need, just on time. The disaster recorder aims to set us on a better path by watching our every move as we all perish during the catastrophe. Now, if you read this article, it's fuck, it's woke tardy to the extreme and complete nonsense where it's about climate change. Well, when was the last climate change catastrophe? It has nothing to do with a gradual change in the climate. A climate change catastrophe doesn't occur from humans farting and cows burping. It happens when giant things fall from the sky or the sun explodes and everything in an instant goes poof. But the black box that they will be constructing guarantees that every minute new de detail of the demise of the human species is recorded. And that, well, that is a white screen. Which is actually a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Thanks for watching, folks. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe and tune in for more booms in the future. Did I say we love you? Yeah, that's a boom. Mm. Merry Christmas.